click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, I welcome you all to this video. We are with chapter 5 of digital image processing where we are learning the image enhancement techniques into the frequency domain. So far in this chapter we have addressed the very popular mathematical tool that is Fourier transform that is working onto the images a two dimensional signal here. So now we have the knowledge of what exactly the Fourier domain is, how the sampling can be done, how the reconstruction of the sample data is also possible for the signals represented into the frequency domain we have reported and we have learned the low pass filtering and high pass filtering for the ideal type, Gaussian type and Butterworth type along with their MATLAB demonstrations here. In the previous video, we have dealt with what exactly the Laplacian means with respect to the images in frequency domain. Now let us address the next topic that it is homomorphic filtering. So here we start with our topic homomorphic filtering. The homomorphic filtering here can be used for the purpose of removal of shading effects into the image. That is, that is due to the uneven type of the illumination we can say here. So now here we shall be reporting the enhancement of the high frequencies into the images along with the attenuation at the low frequencies but while preserving the very fine details into it. So now we shall be going through a simple illumination reflection model with respect to the image formation. The simultaneous type of gray level range compression and the enhancement in terms of contrast of the image is also to be reported here. So now here we visualize a simple diagram. So in this diagram a model of image illumination along with the reflection while image formation we can see here. So now in this block diagram we find illumination source to be the sun here. So from the sun there are sun rays that are illuminating the various objects. So for example we have a scenario with the help of a single tree here represented named by seen here and while we have the illumination by the sun rays few of the sun rays are absorbed by the object whereas few are reflected. So here the sensor imaging sensor we can say here so in our case the human visual system we have so I is nothing but the image sensor so it will be getting the sun rays from the sun directly as well as the sun rays that have been reflected from the object a part of scenario being imaged there. So here this is the reflection and the first one is the case of illumination here. So this is the simple model here. Now this image formation model we can represent with the simple mathematical representation given by f of x comma y that represents the image we visualize where x and y are the two special parameters whereas f represents its corresponding intensity. So this depends on the two factors that are represented a multiplication i of x comma y and r of x comma y where i represents the illumination portion and r represents the reflected portion. So both are accounted while forming the image here. So here illumination show the spatial variations into the image whereas on the another hand the reflectance shows us the very abruptness the particular cases of the junctions of dissimilarities of objects into the scenario here. Now we have the product of these two that is i of xy is multiplied with the r of xy forming our image represented f of x comma y. When we represent this product into the Fourier transform but they are not equal. So when we have the image f of xy represented by Fourier transform. Here we can denote it as capital F of small f x comma y here. So this is different to the product of the multiplication of the Fourier transforms of the corresponding illumination and the reflection terms as represented here. 
taking the logarithm of the product here we can represent individually for f of x comma y when ln the natural logarithm is taken we can denote it by z of x comma y here so this is equal to the natural logarithm of the elimination term i of x comma y which is added with the natural logarithm ln of r of x comma y here so here we have the separation of the signal source in terms of illumination and reflectance here hence representing capital z of uv into the fourier domain is equal to capital f suffix i of u comma v added with capital f suffix r for u comma v here so the suffixes i and r are the separations with respect to the illumination and reflectance here in general we can represent after the filtering the filtered image by capital s of u comma v into the frequency domain as a multiplication of the filtering function capital h of u comma v into the z of u comma v the fourier representation of the image in terms of illumination and reflectance here so therefore by the next step we obtain s of u comma v as h of u comma v into f suffix i of u comma v so this product is added with another product that has h of u comma v into f suffix r of u comma v so while taking the inverse fourier transform so that we can get back to the spatial domain displaying the filtered image because of the homomorphic filtering we can represent the filtered image as s of x comma y in small cases here so this is f inverse here operating the inverse fourier transform so this is operated onto the both terms into the right hand side so the both the product terms h of u comma v into f suffix i of u comma v is operated with the inverse fourier transform also the product of h of u comma v into capital f suffix r of u comma v is also operated with the inverse fourier transform now let us denote small i dash of x comma y is equal to the first term here that is obtained as the inverse fourier transform in absolute form here and the another representation small r dash of x comma y when we get back the details of the second term while shifting to the spatial domain by the inverse fourier transform here so finally the filtered image by the homomorphic filtering is represented as s of x comma y in small case a multiplication of i dash of x comma y with r dash of x comma y so this is the homomorphic filtering here further the g of x comma y can also be represented by taking exponential of the intermediate image that we have obtained s of x comma y so it can be further represented by the next step as e to the power i dash of x comma y in multiplication to e to the power r dash of x comma y so this can further be also denoted as small i suffix 0 of x comma y in multiplication to small r suffix 0 of x comma y here where i suffix 0 of x comma y is the exponential e to the power i dash of x comma y whereas r suffix 0 of x comma y is nothing but the exponential e to the power r dash of x comma y here so this is the simple block schematic to represent how the homomorphic filtering is operated on to the input image so on the left hand extreme we represent f of x comma y for the original input image so the first block represents the ln natural logarithm next block is the dft so first of all finding the logarithm then finding the dft the discrete fourier transform the two dimensional will be the applicable and the corresponding size of the kernel matrix is to be determined to see the input image next we have the input from these cases of illumination and the reflection as we have and then further processing by the filtering function represented in the frequency domain capital h in bracket u comma v so after the filtering we carry out in the frequency domain 
we need to perform the inverse transformation hence the next block is of dft inverse here finally multiplying and representing it in terms of the exponential we get the final image g of x comma y here so here we have the representation of the filter function in the fourier domain capital h of u comma v computed as here we have gamma suffix h minus gamma suffix l in terms of the high and low frequencies in multiplication to the square bracket where we have 1 minus exponential of minus c in the bracket u square plus v square divided by d0 square and further this term is added with gamma suffix l here so here we have a graphical representation in the graphical representation we have d of u comma v on horizontal axis and h of u comma v onto the vertical axis so this is the example of filtering for the purpose of sharpening where we have the radius from the origin denoted on this particular axis and the illumination and reflection with respect to the low frequency gamma suffix l and gamma suffix h representing the high frequency are denoted as image is taken for example the original image we represent on the left hand side and the homomorphic filtering when performed the output can be represented in the right hand side so here it is very very clear that the output image has been enhanced has been improved as compared to that of the input image this is the case of homomorphic filtering this is another example representing us the various values of the low frequencies high frequencies the variable c along with the d0 that has at value c value is 1 the low frequency at 0 0.25 high frequency at 2 here so on the left hand side we find a full body pet scan here so here pet stands for the positron emission tomography for the purpose of medical diagnosis here it is taken here and after the application of homomorphic filtering this image has been enhanced so it is very clear that many of the details those were not available and not better seen into the left hand side are now visualized after the application of homomorphic filtering so i hope the homomorphic filtering is clear to you people for the purpose of image enhancement while working into the frequency domain by the next lecture we continue with the same chapter image enhancement for frequency domain addressing the topic selective type of filtering i hope you enjoy learning the digital image processing for more information and knowledge of the subject along with the practical hands-on you can subscribe to ekeda channel thank you